Hey guys, this is Matt with 4hydroponics.com and today we're going to be talking about pH lockout in both hydroponic and uh, soil. So first we'll talk about hydroponic, it's a little bit easier one to fix. Um, and hydroponics, uh, nutrient lockout would show itself as a deficiency, same thing it shows itself in soil or soilless mediums as a hunger. Um, pH is uh, going to be a number scale that uh, we use to uh, basically quantify your nutrient availability. Um, so if it's too high or too low, that nutrients will just not be available to the plant. No matter how much that you added to the liquid, um, it will, the plant won't be able to access it. So it will show itself as starving, which it is because uh, it's just not available. Um, so if your liquid in your nutrient reservoir um, is too high or too low a pH, and we'll say a general rule of thumb for most species of plants are going to be, you know, 5.5 is going to be your low and 7.5 is going to be around your high. Um, in soil, it's a little shifted up and hydro just a little down, but that's a general rule of thumb. And if you're not testing your pH, you could uh, have your nutrients running really low or really high, and that could, ex you could cause a ton of problems in your garden. Um, yields, flavors, aromas, overall growth rates, um, it'll show up as yellowing and spotting and all these problems that just drive you nuts. And it could be as simple as monitoring your pH with a pH meter and adjusting it with some pH or pH up or pH down. Um, so uh, obviously during your res changes and during the course of the week, you're going to want to monitor it with some kind of pH uh, meter. Either uh, That's why a lot of people do use the constant read so that they can just peek in their room. It's already plugged into the wall. It runs all the time with a probe in your reservoir all the time, 24-7, and you can just peek in there and make sure that it's in the range you want. Um, and that They are a little pricey, so you know a, a pen style pH probe. Our pH pen would probably be a little bit more reasonable for most people. Um, that's just going to require you going down there, taking a sample every couple of days, or at least maybe once a day, ideally, um, if you can get in there and doing a check. Um, I would recommend um, doing uh, some kind of plastic container, and uh, not glass preferably, but a plastic container, um, scooping some of that water out of your reservoir and testing it with your pen. It makes it easier on you and you give it better accurate measurement. Um, and if you do find it to be too too low or too high, we're going to want to use the adjusters uh, pH up or pH down, which we have a ton of on our website, and there's tons of different brands that make them. Um, so uh, if you have a preference or you're in one of the companies that you use makes their own, I just recommend going with one of those. Uh, but you do want to get that in range as soon as possible, and you will see an increase in your overall production. Uh, and then next is the soil or soil list. This can be a little bit trickier to deal with, and it might be more of a common problem. Uh, I think less soil, so, uh, soil or soilless gardeners uh, use pH meters than maybe a hydroponics gardener does, um, so they might run this issue more. Uh, it does seem to happen when you feed a lot. Um, a lot of times that build up of nutrients can cause um, different issues with pH, uh, but I'd say the main cause is just not pHing your water ever and uh, watering at an extreme pH. Either you're unknowingly watering at a high pH, in the high sevens, mid sevens, or you're unknowingly watering in the low fives, even in the high fours. Um, this will eventually drive the pH of the medium um, down or up enough to make all the nutrients in that medium pretty much unavailable. Um, they Certain nutrients do become less and more available as that number shifts. For instance, phosphorus, which is extremely important to energy for the plant, um, becomes a little less available around 6.2. It starts to kind of fall off the map even around 6. Um, and this is in soil mostly. Um, and so you'll see that if you're running a thick amended soil and you're running a low pH solution and you don't know it and you're starting to see that problem, you could start uh, just to have drifted your pH down so far that those nutrients that are really important during flowering periods are harder and harder to get to. Uh, in a soilless mix, um, you just really need to monitor the pH of the water going in. As long as you're giving the plant the proper pH every time you water, the medium should stay right around there. And that's kind of the idea behind the cocoa or the pro mix or the sunshine where as long as you're giving them a good pH solution with nutrients that's in there is available, the medium should stay at a good neutral pH for the entirety of its life cycle. Um, to test this, if you start having these problems show up and you're not sure what it is, it'll show up as hunger. It's a deficiency. The plants can't get to the food, so they're hungry, they're starting to starve, they're starting to eat their own leaf tissue up to supplement their own nutrient needs. 
Um, and uh, so before you start what we call pray and pour, before you start just dumping whatever nutrient you think the plant needs on there, I would recommend trying to do some kind of test. Uh, a first easy preliminary test is to use a pH meter to test water that you're putting in and test the runout coming out. Um, this won't get you a very a super accurate reading, so don't put everything into this test. But if you put 7.0 pH water in and it comes out in the low fives, you know that your medium must be really, really low to drop that water that much that fast. So this is a good indicator that you'll need to do some more research and try to get that corrected. Um, and then uh, that would be something that I would start with. Um, if you start getting some weird numbers coming in and out, then I'd go further with something like a probe, a digital soil pH probe, um, or one of these cheaper little uh, rapid test soil uh, pH tester kits that you basically take a pinch of soil put in there, the powder that they give you put in there, a little bit of water, shake it around and it'll give you a color and you match that color with a chart and that'll give you a good idea of your pH of your medium. Keep in mind you want to do a test in the lower two-thirds of the container so either dig some out of the holes that are in the bottom of your pot or take some kind of hollow you know, uh, metal tube and maybe do some kind of like core sample thing. Uh, but we wanna get a lower sample of soil to get a good test. Um, if you find that you're too high or too low, there's a couple ways to correct it. If you're in an amended soil, especially if you're running organics, you'll hear a lot of people say, oh, don't pH if you're running organics and you're running soil. The reason that is, is because we need, our microbes are gonna be doing our pHing for us. The bacteria is really gonna be doing the majority of the pHing for us. It balances it. So if you're using chlorinated water, or chlor, uh, water that has any kind of like uh, chemical in there to kill microbes, you're gonna be killing off the ability of your soil to pH itself. So if, running, if you're running organics, make sure that you do not uh, run, uh, I'm sorry, that you run very clean water. Um, and then we also want to encourage those microbes into soil mediums and soilless mediums for their pHing properties and their overall ability to break down nutrients and help everything continue through the cycle. So something like Organism XL, Great White, Plant Success, um, the uh, sorry, the uh, Sea Green. Um, these are all great microbe solutions that you can mix into water and get your medium really moving with living organisms to help that cycle continue. If you're really out of whack or if you're in soilless and you don't really want to deal with microbes because you're using a strong synthetic nutrients that's really just kind of wiping them out every so often anyway, then we might go with something more like a flush to get that medium back on track. Um, I don't feel like flushing is the answer for everything because when you flush, not every nutrient comes out in the same amount. So think if you have a nutrient you're trying to flush out, but you have a nutrient you want to leave in there, they might both be coming out, or even the one that you want to be in there might be coming out at a larger rate than you expect. So flushing is kind of a last thing, last ditch thing for me, um, but if they're really far off one way or another, I would mix this with water, pH it, and try to flush out, and then uh, go from there. Um, and then if you are wanting to do a little bit more subtle um, pH adjustment, you're not too far off, Lime is a good way, especially in soil or soillesses. Um, and then on top of that, uh, if you say you're too low in your medium and you want to come up, if you start watering at a higher pH, like if you're in the low fives and you want to come up, you could water in in the mid sevens or low sevens and that will help over time shift that uh, medium up. But that's only if you have enough time to do that. Um, once again, this will all, all pH lockout shows itself as deficiency it's hungry for food it just can't access it so anytime you see hunger and you're looking up pictures to double check uh, keep in mind pH of that medium or that water um, could be the, the whole thing the whole culprit could just be behind the pH and once you've adjusted it your schedule that you've been sticking to could go back to working just fine um, uh, so hopefully this all helped you guys out um, all this stuff's available on our website and way more stuff more flushes more lime products more microbes um, cheaper and more economical meters all those kind of things on our website come check it out um, we'll check you guys out next time